This is this is their interview, man. So we're going to have a little bit of fun here on Gojo and Golik right now, a little combine of our own. Let's start with the three cone drill. So this one is simple. You guys don't have to do anything physical. Just put your brain to work. Give us yeah. three guys who are keeping an eye on this week in Indy, maybe guys who are set to make a big splash here, Gojo. Yep, as we get going here, uh, Dad, and just a little housekeeping for the schedule of events, you'll have D linemen and linebackers first up on Thursday, DBs and tight ends Friday, Saturday, we get the money that everyone's looking for, quarterbacks, wide receivers, and running backs, and then Sunday, we finish off with the beef, the offensive line, getting after it, and they're going to go through all these drills, Dad, that as you mentioned, at these big box facilities all over the country, they're training guys for instead of actually having them do football stuff, and the three cone, one of the more complicated ones, but uh, thankfully for us, it's pretty easy, Dad. Three guys going into this week. Uh, that yeah. you think have a chance to blow up the combine the three guys that you're most excited about checking out this week because everyone's going to focus on the quarterbacks dad who's throwing yeah. and who's not at this point Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels not going to go out there and throw for scouts at the combine but you're going to see Bo Nix JJ McCarthy and Michael Penix Jr. all have elected to go and throw for drills there which is certainly going to draw interest from a lot of people but is there anyone else dad that you're most excited to see in this ball? yeah and, and first, as I mentioned, that three cone drill. Too bad. Too bad you can't you can't watch any film on these guys in actual football equipment changing direction. God, I know that's hard to get that film. It's secretive, so you need them in shorts and a t-shirt to run around some cones. Good stuff. All right, and, and listen. Let me reiterate. I do not blame the players in any of this. They're just training for what the league has set up here. So. For me, first-round guys are first-round guys, right? We kind of know most of who they're going to be. So who's the guys that can maybe jump up? Maybe use the combine, and as I've talked about, not for that specific drill to move you up, but to say, hey, let me go watch some more tape on this guy. Let me start first with Jalen Wright, a running back from Tennessee. He had his first 1,000-yard season last year. Uh, he's 5'11", 200 pounds, so he kind of came onto the scene with that first 1,000 season, caught over 20 passes uh, as well, but the question on him is his speed, so everybody is going to look at the 40-yard dash, so what big box is he working out at, how are they working on a stance, which doesn't resemble a football stance at all, and a stance he'll never get into again in his football life when he, when he runs this 40, yet here it's going to be. Mike, on this 40-yard dash, could this push him to a day-two guy if he can run a fast enough 40? But I'm rooting for you, Jalen, and I'm sure he's working on that 40. God, it just dripping with sarcasm and doubt here. I just, <laughs> I, it, you know what is funny is I was thinking about your line about how you can't bring the best press out on the 50-yard line before you said it was a line your dad had yep. said all the time. You kind of do on every play, like when you really think about it, like – it's why we lift all them weights. So we kind of do bring the bench press out onto the 50 yard line. You kind of, I, I, I probably have more fun with this than I should. You, what you do, you use a little bit of all of this, right? Straight ahead speed. How do your hips shift? How strong are you? But quite honestly, what is not measured and I'll take, listen, I'd love strength as well. Give me Reggie white where you have strength and leverage, but give me leverage. You know, give me proper technique and give me leverage and I'll, I'll get a guy. You, you give me the strongest offensive lineman in the world who has no technique and a D lineman who's not as strong but has technique. I'm taking the technique guy. You know, I, I just am. Over, over the long haul, he's going to win, and that's not something that's measured a whole lot at the combine. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure there's someone poking and prodding in the back as the uh, medicals get underway that's going to see just how bendy these guys are to get in that position. I'll take the low-hanging fruit on this one, Dad. J.J. McCarthy is going to be a fascinating conversation all week in the combine, yes. and I think this is less any one physical drill, although I do think seeing J.J. McCarthy throwing consistently next to Michael Penix Jr., Bo Nix, guys who were in a lot more pass-heavy offenses than what we saw from Michigan during the entirety of their national championship season – 
I do think this is one of those spots, and you hear scouts talk about it all the time, just seeing these guys go out there and throw one right after another. And we know how these quarterback drills work, where quarterback will go out there, he'll throw for a handful of plays, the next guy will run in and be the guy throwing for these receivers. And so seeing what it looks like with J.J. McCarthy next to a lot of these guys a little bit more consistently, I think is going to be important as much as it is hey, what do the interviews sound like? What do you get from this guy from the neck up? And what is the explanation going to be? Because I'm sure he's going to be asked, hey, if we're supposed to take you in the first round, why weren't there more instances when you were at Michigan where you were the one called upon in big moments to go and throw them through games? You you and I both agree he's a real interesting one where he's getting projected to possibly go compared to the other quarterbacks when it's a throwing league right now and they lean so much on the run, that is an interesting one. Uh, my three, my two more, they're definitely guys that aren't household names. Another one I'm going with, Isaiah Williams, a wide receiver at Illinois. This is a guy who went to Illinois as a quarterback and then went to wide receiver at 5'8". Well, at least that's the thought, 5'8", or is he taller than that, of what he's doing at wide receiver. 2023, he had uh, uh, over 1,000 yards, five touchdowns. In the NFL, you know they love the slot right now. So... It's amazing for, I just talked about the last guy, the running back in the 40. For Isaiah, it may be what the tape measure says, right? Are you 5'8 or are you 5'10? You know, we know what these measurables are like, you know, at, at the combine, the size of the hands, how tall are you in that? So I think this is a guy that can make an impact in the, at the slot position, a really important position in the NFL right now. Yeah, it's, it's certainly one that's... It, I want want to say become incredibly in vogue, but man, it's used a lot more in so many of these, especially Shanahan McVay offenses where you got guys that can raise hell in the middle of the field. I'll go two more. I've been looking forward to watching this guy's combine for a couple of years now. Peyton Wilson, linebacker out of NC State, was oh, an award winner in college yeah. football this year, has been hurt a bunch in his career, so the medical going to be really important for him. But, Dad, this dude's got a jetpack strapped to his back. When you watch him in the open field hawking down wide receivers, for NC State, the two years ago had the best linebacker group in the ACC. He lost a bunch of his buddies this past weekend, was out there a little bit more solo, but an absolute physical freak. Now, he's a little bit down. This is a crowded outside linebacker class led by yeah. guys like Dallas Turner, Liatu, Lot to Chop Robinson out of Penn State, but Peyton Wilson's a guy who, at the very least, tons of special teams upside and is going to be an absolute testing phenom, even with the amount of injuries this guy suffered in his college career. Feel like he's been in college for about nine years. I called a couple of his games back when I was finishing up at ESPN, but I love him. He is such a tough player. My last one's going to be Jared Wiley, a tight end out of TCU. He transferred over to TCU, was all Big 12 first team this past year. And then won uh, the Player of the Week award, a tight end, for the Senior Bowl. He's 6'6", about 253. Some are making a little comparison to Sam Laporta. And we saw between Laporta and Dalton what rookie tight ends Michael Mayer later in the season can do in this league and the effect they can have in this league. He'll work on his blocking, but he's a guy, a big guy, 6'6", good hands that can run the seam really well. So I wonder how much, you know, this this combine can help this guy, his look that he has, and him catching the ball down the middle of the field. Yeah, he was a monster during TCU's run to the national title a year ago. Was an integral part of their red zone offense. Big time, I big time dude there. So uh, no doubt about that one there. Dad, the last one I'll go with uh, just to get some beef on the board. Uh, this is a crowded offensive tackle class. We've talked about it at the top between uh, guys like uh, guys like Joe Alt coming out of Notre Dame and uh, Olu right. Fashanu out of Penn State. But I look at Kingsley Suomataya out of BYU. Former five-star player, just a gigantic mass of humanity. This is one of those O-linemen that has a chance to be a combine freak who blows it up with all the numbers and gives you a lot of the testing stuff that everybody looks like. To your point, it, it, it's still, he's a good player on the field. I haven't gone back and watched him in totality yet to get ready for this, but he seems like one of the guys in that group on the O-line that has a chance to really test out of the roof on this thing. Yep. So get ready for it, gang. I mean... <laughs> I don't want it. Let, let's not make it sound like I hate this thing. I love watching it. I love the players training for these drills to go out and perform them to the best of their ability and put yourself in the best position you can and then digest that information how you need to use for these guys. But this is this is their interview, man. 